Africa, the second largest continent on Earth after Asia, with about 30 million square kilometers, including adjacent islands and the Sahara, the world's largest desert, Africa covers over 20% of Earth's total land area. This is a continent of unparalleled natural beauty, and its rainforests are an important stock of carbon and rain of biodiversity. We move deep inside the Ankeza Forest Reserve in Ghana to see the wonderful of this intricate ecosystem from within, directly from the eyes of a forest giant pangolin. Ankaza Reserve's extension is about 500 square kilometers and it is the area with the highest rainfall in Ghana, about 1,700-2,000 mm per year. This is the richest forest of the country in terms of botanical diversity. About 300 plant species have been recorded in a single hectare. Notable among the trees are Tiegemella Hekeli, Cheiba Pentandra, and Kaya Ivorensis. Most rainforest soil is very poor, with all the nutrients available largely remaining at surface level. Because of this, rainforest trees have very shallow roots. Some very tall trees have developed ways of obtaining much needed additional support by forming buttressed roots which grow out from the base of the trunk sometimes as high as 15 feet above the ground. These extended roots also increase the area over which nutrients can be absorbed from the soil. Lianas, a type of climbing vine found throughout tropical rainforests, begin life on the forest floor, but depend on trees for support as they climb upwards towards the sunlight they need for survival. They do this by attaching themselves to trees with sucker roots or tendrils and growing with the young sapling, or they climb by winding themselves round the tree's trunk. When they reach the top of the canopy, they often spread to other trees or wrap themselves around other lianas. This network of vines gives support against strong winds to the shallow rooted, top heavy trees. Epiphytes grow everywhere but can be found mainly on the branches, trunks, and even the leaves of trees. Different types of epiphytes may grow on the same tree, including orchids, cacti, bromelids, aroids, lichens, mosses and ferns. They begin their life in the canopy from seeds or spores transported there by birds or winds. Sounds of rainforest animals, such as the rare Diana's monkey, frogs and toucans, can be heard everywhere for many kilometers. Rainforests are very fragile habitats. In many places they are wet deserts, which grow in soils poor in nutrients. The bedrock is very old and weathered, and consequently depleted in minerals and nutrients. Mineral release is also inhibited by the acidic nature of many tropical soils. The soil types derived from the bedrock and the lying tropical forests are mainly soils called oxisols and altisols. Because of any tropical soil is acidic and depleted in weatherable minerals such as calcium, potassium and magnesium, essential for plants, 
These have adaptations which allow them to exploit the limited quantities of nutrients. Root biomass is very high where soils are infertile so that plants can locate whatever nutrients might be available. Forest trees grow on a mat of fungi called mycorrhizae, which absorb nutrients, phosphorus and other minerals and transfer them to roots. More than 50% of the precipitation struck in a rainforest is returned to the atmosphere by evotranspiration and consequently relatively little will end up in rivers and other waters. Most of the water released by evotranspiration to the atmosphere as water vapor will be returned to the forest as rain, so rainforests provide their own rainfall. Much energy must be invested in root systems and energy expenditures for leaves are minimized by retaining them for a considerable time, although this risks being attacked by pests. As an adaptation to this situation, many tropical plants form tough leaves containing noxious tannins and reinforced with woody fibers. Tropical forests are organized in a vertical dimension. This layer of vegetation consists of emergent trees, a dense foliage below them, and several other layers, treelets, shrubs, lianas, up to the herbaceous plants on the ground level. Tropical forests are rich of and depend on symbiotic interactions such as those between figs and wasps, ants and epiphytes, trees and lianas, termites and pitcher plants and many others. Tropical waters, whether they are giant rivers, streams or oxbow lakes, are almost as rich in animal species as the rainforests that surround them but they too are increasingly threatened by human activities, including pollution, siltation resulting from deforestation, hydroelectric projects and over-harvesting of resident species. Most trees will not bloom and bear fruits until they reach a certain height, avoiding to be suppressed by neighbors during their growth. Stratification has important implications in sun detection and microclimate formation within forests. The superimposition of many crowns is one of the mechanisms that contributes to the high diversity of plant species in forests. In tropical forests, canopy gaps have immediate impacts on light interception, heat fluxes, water stress and plant productivity and contribute to tree germination. But all these intricate ecosystems are at risk. Africa is already a continent under pressure from climate stresses and it is highly vulnerable to the impacts of global change. Climate has a major influence on rates of photosynthesis and respiration and on other forest processes acting through temperature, radiation and moisture regimes over medium and long-term periods. 
Climate and weather conditions also directly influence shorter term processes in forests, such as frequency of storms and wildfires, herbivores and species migration. As the global climate changes, forest ecosystems will change because species physiological tolerances may be exceeded and the rates of biophysical forest processes will be altered. If climate change results in a significant reduction in water availability, then the forest system will naturally change species composition. For example, the vegetation will reach a threshold beyond which the vegetation structure is not sufficiently tall and dense to comprise a forest, along with the concomitant changes in the dominant taxonomic composition of the plant community. Despite the increasingly acknowledged importance of Africa in the global carbon cycle and its high vulnerability to climate change due to both ecological and socioeconomic factors, there's still a lack of studies on the carbon cycle in representative African ecosystems, tropical forests in particular, and on the effects of climate on ecosystem atmosphere exchange. Many studies have established that resilience in ecosystems is related to the biological diversity in the system and the capacity that it confers to maintain ecosystem processes. Loss of functional species in the absence of redundancy has negative consequences for the ecosystem to the point of ecosystem collapse. But biodiversity in Africa continues to decline over 120 plant species are extinct, with another 1,771 threatened. Threats to species are both direct, such as bush meat hunting, and indirect, such as deforestation and habitat loss. Some species, such as the bonobo or pygmy chimpanzee, exist in very limited areas. Loss of habitat in these relatively small areas can lead to the rapid extinction of species. Rainforests provide important services, now we call ecosystem services, including buffering against flood and drought, storing carbon from atmosphere, stabilizing soils, influencing rainfall patterns and providing habitats to wildlife and indigenous people. While rainforests are fundamental to human beings, they are rapidly being destroyed by activities of civilizations. The first cause of deforestation is conversion of forest land for agriculture. If in the past subsistence agriculture was the primary driver of rainforest conversion, Today, industrial agriculture, especially monoculture and livestock production, is the dominant driver of rainforest loss worldwide. After three years of research in tropical forests of Africa, a team composed of ecologists foresters, biologists, climatologists, physicists and soil experts of the University of Tuscia of Italy shed more light on the ecology, climate and biodiversity of these ecosystems. The researchers demonstrated that logging, even if selective, represents one of the biggest causes of forest degradation and usually precedes deforestation for agriculture. This practice frequently has several important negative effects on forest structure, dynamics, biodiversity and ecosystem services, and that these effects can be truly evaluated 
only in the long term by analyzing the evolving dynamics of repeated logging. From the data collected, the Turbo University ecologists developed a mathematical deterministic model of equilibrium states and they found evidence of a decrease of plant's diversity in tropical forests subject to selective logging compared to the same but untouched forest. This seems due to the local disturbance which involves the invasion of open space left by log trees by weed and vines at the expenses of late successional state biosynosis. Tushu University team also combined data derived from the new global canopy map developed by NASA through the LiDAR survey of Earth and the global map of vascular plant produced by the NES Institute für Biodiversität der Pflanzen to show that there is a global positive correlation between forest canopy height and biodiversity and that it follows a latitudinal gradient. Looking behind in climatic history, the Italian research team tried to understand the effects of greenhouse gas emissions after the industrial age and their effects on growth trends of tropical trees born in the 17th century. They showed, as preliminary results, that the Sapele and Ayus species studied in tropical forests of Africa increased their growth trends during the last century, from 1,900, possibly due to the effect of carbon dioxide fertilization coming from anthropogenic sources. Further analysis will clarify this preliminary conclusion and move deeper inside in physiological explication. This finding calls for an urgent adaptation and mitigation response aimed at protecting and enhancing the forest conservation through specific interventions both in terms of policy and management and regulatory mechanisms to prevent human pressure on tropical areas. Forests are worldwide often seen as resources providers. And even if it is true for an economical point of view, the science of ecology should move beyond this mechanistic consideration and see them as not only ecosystems, but as fundamental and insoluble parts of the bigger system we call Earth. As organs of who the two science outsiders, James Lovelock and Lynn Margulis, called Gaia, In this historic moment, we all have the moral imperative to be outsiders and to merge scientific evidence with the ethical issue. Because one without the other is a mere speculation on mechanical parts and ecology is all but the study of distinct elements. Ecology is the study of life, nothing more than a long evolution of associations.
Oh, my God. 